Hey everybody, this is Birch. A few days ago I did a video saying, when are we going to get over Bendis already? And um, yeah, there's a variety of responses. You know, I, 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 People always think how you're taking shots at them. I saw some people uh, commenting on the video, doing a reaction video. It still cracks me up that I'm a big enough name that people are doing a reaction video beyond uh, like a fart noise and some emojis. I really think that's, that's, the, that's the extent of what the reaction can be. Um, but in, in general, uh, I, I, I really do mean it because one thing that strikes me, and I, I've um, lately, well, the last two days, I put on a bunch of live streams from different people. And I was shocked at how many were, were basically still talking about John Kent being aged up. It's been a long time now. And my thought, my just question was like, how, how, how long are we going to be on this? I mean, it, I agree, fully agree. It sucks, but you know, I, at, at some point you gotta, you gotta move along. It's kind of like, I, I saw somebody complaining that uh, Dan Slott blocked them on Twitter. And, uh, you know, and then they were like, you know, comment, comment, comment. And it's like back in, you know, 2018, I'm like, man, it's a long time to hold on to being pissed off about that. Four years. And if you see Dan Slott's Twitter, uh, you're, you're not missing anything. <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing. I'm going to do a video soon of like, here's what you're missing from people on Twitter. Like, here's what Dan Slott's been saying. Because I, I, I hope that, you know, even if one person out of 100 looks at that and goes, well, that's, that's just a bunch of uh, stupid nonsense. Then, you know, people might feel better, harmony and peace in the world. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict goes away. I, I don't know. But anyway, here's a reader who, who has a bet for when people get over Bendis. Let's find out. It says, hey, Perch, I just watched your video and want to provide an honest answer that actually ignored the Superboy dumpster fire. The question being, in my understanding, when do we get over what Bendis did to the character? Well, I'll just say eight years after, I'm still not over what Bendis did to the X-Men. 2014, immediately post-AVX, Bendis was given Uncanny X-Men, which was Cyclops being Schrodinger's anti-hero. He then brings all new X-Men in, i.e. the time-displaced original five, and then squeezes out two utterly nonsensical crossover events between his books, including bringing in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but he was also writing at the time. Without going into a hyper-obsessive detail, my first draft of this email turned into a doctorate thesis. I'd like to read that, though. You should send it in. Uh, my assertion is that after AVX was the moment that editorial decided Bendis could do no wrong and removed all safety checks from him. That, that checks out. It's about that time. This was a moment when Bendis was given full creative control, and what you uh, mentioned in the video, RiRi, Civil War II, etc., were just aftershocks of the initial decision. Bendis, when given creative freedom with the X-Men franchise, minus Wolverine the X-Men, which ended its 30-ish issue run during that time, uh, um, but, but during that time, uh, but was tightly tied to Bendis' storylines anyway, uh, drove it into the ground so, so hard it still hasn't recovered. The comic franchise has effectively meandered since Bendis' disastrous runs to IVX, which was an event that, that narratively came out of nowhere and went effectively nowhere, like AXE. Um, I mean, goddamn, that did go nowhere. Besides confirming that no one gives a Bendis about the Inhumans. And now no one gives a Bendis about the Eternals either. And now to Krakoa, which is Krakoa. Take shots at any other X-Men writers you want. No one else has left the franchise in such a creative deficit after that eight years on. It's easy to argue it's been at least a downhill slide. Even if the runs weren't popular, the X-Men were always left in a state where someone else could pick up the pieces and write some great stories. Bendis has not done so. I mean, in fairness, uh, to agree with this point that's being made here, no matter what Chuck Austin did to the X-Men, it, it, it recovered. It was still not as bad as what <laughs> it, it did. People were able to move on. We haven't hit that point yet. Anyway, eight years from now, are people still going to be giving Bendis grief for Superman and Superboy? That depends on if that franchise has been so thoroughly wrecked that eight years from now they'll be in their own Krakoa. Maybe they'll be on an island full of Kryptonians who can't die and go fuck all for two years of comics until finally somebody drops a kryptonite dirty bomb on the whole mess. We can always hope. Um, okay, so that's a, that's a, that's a good, um, they brought up something new. So I, I kind of memory hold a little bit of the Bendis X-Men era. And, um, while I didn't enjoy it, it, um, it was easy to kind of, 
I, I do think it was it was a little bit like um, being slowly poisoned. You didn't you didn't necessarily realize how shitty it was until later, because um, it you know I went back and I read um, kind of the first twelve issues I think of both of his books, and they were remarkably terrible. So this was the era when Bendis did fully embrace the idea that everyone talks exactly the same no matter who they are, completely. Um, you have Cyclops, Wolverine, Emma Frost, Kitty Pride, everyone just sounding the same. Sound, they, they, it doesn't matter. They're all indistinguishable from each other. And there was one issue where the letter put the, the words coming out of the wrong people. And the only reason you know it's a case is because it doesn't quite make sense to the panel before it. Otherwise, it didn't matter. You can mix up completely. He, he was leaning in that direction in Avengers, but it, it hadn't gotten this bad. In uh, in the in by the time when he got to the X Men, he was fully into his worst habits. The storylines also materialized nowhere. I, this was the era that gave us the one page Bobby Drake uh, "You're Gay" reveal. People still defend that that moment, even though it's it's completely offensive to everyone involved, including and maybe most of all, people who are trying to come out. Um, so it, it was, I mean, that was, he, he was pretty awful there. And it is now the question is, has it been a complete descent since that time? I mean, we haven't had a spark of great comics following that time. We had the entire secret wars and then the mutants are being killed by the Terrigen mist and the inhuman stuff. And, and then we had, uh, you know, a bunch of just kind of dumbassery nonsense. Um, and then they're killing time, the age of X-Men and now Krakoa. I think I still, you know, people believed that somewhere along the way, you know, Jonathan Hickman was really saving the franchise. I, I think there was like three months where people got real excited about the X-Men being a huge deal again. And then that, that, that started to feel shaky. And then it just came apart a year in, it completely came apart. I think there was this window between House of X, Powers of Ten, where it was like a, a dying, a man dying of thirst was given a glass, of, uh, a man given a glass of water, and you you felt like you were you were almost recovering, and then you know uh, just 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 the stupidity of everything that uh, happened next was was terrible. So um, that's that's kind of where we landed. Um, so I, I mean, did, can you put that all on Bendis? I don't think you can. I think you have to put a lot of that on Marvel who was, you know, questioning if they were going to, uh, continue the X-Men or what they were going to do. The whole Fox drama was going on there. Editorial was downplaying a bunch of shit. So I think there was a number of people involved in that disaster. I don't think it was all Bendis, but that was definitely probably the canary in the coal mine that this whole thing with Bendis was an absolutely terrible fucking idea. And everybody involved should get away from it as much as humanly possible. And they didn't, but that was absolutely would have been the right choice. Um, I think that, you know, I don't know. I think, uh, I, you know, he got the deal. So he was sick, which was a shame. And then, you, you know, we saw the whimper that was Iron Man kind of and, and the, you know, Dr. Doom, Iron Man and all that kind of stuff afterward. And then he goes over to DC. And I mean, the, how quickly in DC did we realize that his run was also going to just be off the rail shitty? Like how, how fast did that, you know, did that shoe drop? I, I think the aging of John Kent certainly pissed people off, but I think it was later than that it was like the stuff he was trying to do with the daily planet newsroom. And some of these plots were just, what the fuck? I mean, it just, it just went sideways hard and fast. And that is, uh, that that's where that landed. But anyway, um, okay. Thank you very much for the, uh, the theory and the mail there. I think you're not wrong. Um, there's, there's your answer, but, um, Bendis at this point, I know Bendis is doing some independent work, has his stuff at uh, dark horse. I think people are over Bendis. I think it's a good opportunity for him to just kind of take a step back, do, do some really solid comics again, build himself back up and, and get that kind of, you know, whatever kind of spark he had for the daredevil books he did and Jessica Jones and even some of the early Avengers try and get back to that. And try and get out of the business of being Kingmaker and kind of some of the other stuff he was involved in that just, you know, not only create a wreckage with his work, but a lot of the people around him. It's um, it's a shame uh, what a parody kind of he became himself. But anyway, thank you very much for the theory. Thanks for uh, writing in. Do you have your theory? When do people get over Bendis? Let me know in mail or in comments below. And thanks for listening.